If she can keep it all running Keeps it running If she can keep it all running Hey you guys! So I am coming at you with another race review today. This is going to be a quick one, um, but I felt it was necessary to make the race review. So here it is. All right. So today I'm doing a race review on the 9-11 Memorial 5K and Half Marathon in Washington, D.C. I'm super excited. I'm actually going to get it out on time. I actually ran this race only two weeks ago. So this will be the fastest that I have ever put out a race review. So, you know. You know give me my props please because it, <laughs> it takes a lot to put these videos out so if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel if you're interested in seeing other race reviews that I do I typically like to travel all over the world and run half marathons and then I put together a race review for you guys so that if you're interested in doing any of the races that I've done you can see what hotels I stayed at what events that I did while I was in the city how the race was and answer any questions that you all may have so Without further ado, I'm going to get into this half marathon review. So as far as accommodations go, I didn't need any accommodations because this race is local for me. So all I had to do was um, drive to the race. It started pretty early, so you can't do public transportation. I know that a lot of the other DC races, um, they will have the train stations open early. But unfortunately, with this event, they did not um, coordinate with Metro. So there's no public transportation early enough to make the start um, line for this race. So you will have to either catch an Uber or drive. Um, as far as parking, there were enough parking garages around the start line. So if you get there early enough, you shouldn't have a problem. As far as the expo goes, there was no running expo, which I was really disappointed in. And if you are a planner and you like to plan out um, your races, this is unfortunately not going to be the race for you. The website that you use to register for the race, um, it wasn't solely dedicated to this particular race. So the race is actually put on by Bishop Events and it looks like they put on about 12 different events in the DC metro area each year. Um, and so they don't really have a designated website for this particular race. I also found it very difficult to find a lot of information for the race. Even like two, three days before the race, I was looking to see, oh my gosh, like I have no idea where the start line is. So when I looked on the web page for the race, it didn't designate where the start line was, where the finish line was, but it did show a course map, but that did nothing for me. So I ended up finding out where the race, the start line for the race was via email. So actually the day before the race, the day before the race, the race event sent out a mass email and it had um, the address to where you would pick up your bib because you had to pick up your bib the morning of race day. And then it actually had um, the address. So pretty much where you pick up your bib and then from there they direct you to where the start line is. So if you are a planner, this is not the race for you. It's gonna drive you crazy. So the morning of race day, I wake up um, I ate a banana and I went ahead and drove to where I received the address in the email of where to pick up my bit. So I go, I park, I end up getting free parking, which was great. And I'm, you know, walking and I have my GPS on because I'm trying to figure out where I'm supposed to pick up my bit. And then I get there and it's literally like a table set up in the corner of a parking lot really. It's, 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 it's closer to the sidewalk. So it's more like a table set up on the sidewalk and they have two people and you pretty much just go up there and you give them your name and then they give you your bib and your shirt. So this is the shirt by the way. Um, I thought it was pretty cool. Let's see if you guys can see it. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so, and so if you are one of the people that like to actually wear your shirt during race day, this is not the race for you because we actually didn't even get our shirts until the morning of race day. So, um, yeah. And so there was probably like another, I would say an hour from when I picked up, cause I picked up my shirt super early cause I knew like I had no idea where to pick it up. So I got there super early. So there was about an hour between when I picked up my shirt and, um, the start time of the race. So I just went back to my car and I just chilled and I took a nap because <laughs> I'm like really, I can pretty much take a nap wherever. So I just took a nap and then I started 
maybe like 20 minutes before the start time, I started heading to the, the start line, okay? They had porta potties out there so that people can use the restroom and stuff before the race. And it's, I'm walking closer and closer to the start line and I'm thinking, hmm, like I don't hear any music. I don't hear any like announcements going. Um, Cause usually like when you go to a, like a start line, like they have like, they're like hyping you up, okay? So they have like announcements and they're playing music and they're just like, duh, duh. like, you know, they, they, they get in the crowd hyped up, okay? So I get to the start line and it is literally like nothing. Like there's no music. I don't see any like people with like, you know, vest on or like you know event shirts or nothing that designate like the people who are running versus the people who are working the event so it's just kind of it wasn't really chaos um because it wasn't that many people so the event was kind of small i would say it was probably like 316 people something like that so it was pretty small so it wasn't chaos but i kind of felt like it was it didn't feel like i was about to run a half marathon so um we get up there and literally at the start of the race, there's literally someone that's just screaming, on your mark, get set, go. And I'm just like, are you serious? Like they didn't even have like a bullhorn or nothing. Um, and so then that was the first corral. And then they did that for like the uh, all five of the corrals. So I just thought it was kind of like, I don't know, like, I don't want to say low budget, but I, I just didn't feel like there was effort put in there. Um, I think that they could at least got like a DJ or someone could have brought like a speaker and played music, but there was nothing. When I started, literally like the entire race was on gravel and cobblestone, the entire 13 miles. And so it was really tough on my knees and I really wasn't expecting it. Cause like I said, like when you look at the webpage, I didn't feel like there was a lot of information on the webpage. I do feel like they did um, say, you know, like the start line was gonna be like in a graveled area, but I did not know that the entire race course was going to be on gravel and cobblestone. So um, I definitely struggled the entire race because my knees were hurting so bad. Um, and I think like a lot of people were kind of feeling the same way that I was feeling. And then also to, um, it's like where the, I don't, it's where the race was, we were on, it, it's kind of like a service road. So I feel like the entire race was a, like on a service road. And then if you look to your left, like you can see like a paved trail over there. Um, but that's not where we were running. I guess that was for, that's like a typical, you know, trail along this particular creek um, that people can run on the weekends and whatnot. But where we were running was like the service road to that trail. So I was kind of disappointed in that because I'm like, you know, literally I can see 10 feet away from me or like 20 feet away from me, there's a very nice paved trail that I'm not running on. So overall, I will say that the course was beautiful. Um, there was bodies of water, there were pretty trees, they had bridges, so the course was beautiful, but it was very difficult to run it. And then also because of where the location was for the race, and I guess like the, the type of event or bishop events that put on the race, there was absolutely no cheer support. It was an out and back, which I'm not, that's not my favorite um, race course anyways. Like I very much so like the loop. They did have some race support, so I saw four water stations, but really like you passed each one of them twice, so it wasn't that bad. Um, they did have water and Gatorade at the water stations. There weren't any edibles, so no um, granola bars or chews or any bananas, orange slices, anything like that. Um, but one thing that I will say about the race support is that they were not very supportive of the runners and they were not very interested in us either. So when I would go to a water station, literally the race support person would just be like this. Like he would just be on his phone the whole time. He didn't look up or anything. Um, so they had all the water laying out on the tables and then you pretty much, you, you grab your own water so they wasn't even like handing them to you for real. So you pretty much grab your own water and I kind of felt like they just, it didn't seem like they wanted to be there. And so then I kind of felt like that that kind of lowered the morale because they didn't want to be there and I feel like I'm running on this cobblestone and it's hot and I'm like, well dang, I don't really want to be here either. Um, so, 
So after I do the um, out and back, last half mile of the race, and I'm jogging and I see this girl and she's walking. So in my mind, I know that the race is almost over and I'm trying to, you know, rank well. Even though the race is crappy and I know that like, um, I haven't, I, I, would, I would run like a mile and not see anyone. So there were like a few miles along the course where I was pretty much running by myself. So there's no cheer support, there's no other runners by me. Um, it was a very, it felt like a training day as opposed to a race day. So anyway, so I see this girl and she's walking and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna pass it, I'm gonna pass it, right? So we go up and we're probably like a quarter mile out from the end of the race. And I see that she's jogging and so she's trying to pass me. And so I just start jogging faster because I'm like, you know, if you're gonna outrank me, you're I'm def I'm gonna make you work for it, right? Like I'm gonna make you work for it. So towards the end, I just started sprinting and I really gave it everything that I had left in me to make sure that I finished strong and that I beat <laughs> and that I beat this other girl that's trying to catch me, right? And so I put everything I have into it. I run, I sprint across the finish line and I look back to see how far away she is. And she done gave up. Like she was just like, look girl, I've been running on this cobblestone for the last two and a half, three hours. I'm not messing with you. So she gave up. So I was able to outrank her. Um, I think I placed like 270 or something like that out of like 316 people. So I didn't place amazingly. Um, I definitely didn't train as much for this race as I should have, but my goal for the race, I wasn't going for a specific time. I really, I would have liked to have beat 230, um, but it wasn't like a big deal to me. I really just wanted to finish. And then once I started and I saw that the whole course was going to be gravel and cobblestone, I pretty much was like, yeah, I just want to finish. I'm not pushing really hard for that 230. So just like me, I'm sure a lot of you guys love the race bling and the medals at the end of the races. And so for this particular race, it was in remembrance of 9-11. And so one of the things that the military actually does is they give challenge coins um, to reward great effort and, and to reward exceptional behavior. So they give challenge coins. So I knew that this race wasn't gonna give a medal and they were gonna give challenge coins instead. And I thought that that was really cool. And so when they when I crossed the finish line, it kind of felt weird because they didn't put a medal over you. And I was like, oh, dang, like I didn't realize how much I would miss that from this race. So they didn't give that, but they gave a challenge coin. And so when I like got it, um, I was like limping back to my car because I literally gave it everything that I had for this race. So I got in the car and I looked at my coin. And so this is it. Let me show you guys. This is it. And so here's the front and here's the back of it and to be honest like I was very disappointed like I felt like I mean I don't know like I was really disappointed in the challenge coin like I thought um the design could be better um the weight of it could be better like I just it wasn't it wasn't what I was hoping for especially after running such a difficult race like I thought that the reward for the race was just kind of like yeah so overall, I would give it a five out of 10. Um, and I think that the things that are really like saving it from being like lower than that is that the course was beautiful. Um, that it had really, really nice scenery. But as far as like the preparation for the race, like knowing where to go and stuff for the race, um, the shirt is good. So the shirt kind of saves it. The race support, the cheer support, the metal, it's just, it just wasn't, um, for me so unfortunately I don't think I'll be doing a race again anytime soon so maybe you know four or five years out if they like I don't know step their game up a little bit then maybe I'll try it again but overall I do not recommend it so sorry have you all ever ran a race where you felt like it just didn't meet your expectations um, cause this one definitely didn't meet mine. So if you have a similar race experience, please let me know in the comments below. Please make sure to like this video and I will check you guys out next time. Alrighty. Bye.